Okay, since it has been now five days since the workshop started, uh, it may not be a bad idea to just remind you of uh, where we are going. So I'll begin with begin slowly with some general comments. So, so let's start with the title of this workshop, which is uh, a good thing to keep in mind: combinatorial models in representation theory. So the word representation theory can mean several things and um, in this workshop rep theory the way we are interpreting is finite dimensional uh, representation theory of G which is a semi complex semi simple Lie algebra. And in particular, we are interested in G especially, and that is mostly the topic of Ravinder's lectures, G is equal to SLNC. Although um, you should also keep in mind that maybe you are interested in other representation theories like that of finite groups for example um, and there are models, the models that we talk about here for this representation theory are also relevant for other representation theories. Uh, and more generally G could be taken to be, uh, so G, so more generally the representation theory is in of, more generally of integrable highest weight representations of G, which is a symmetrizable cartes moody lie algebra. Okay, and if you know these, what this term means, fine. If you don't, then you can ignore it completely. This is already um, significant enough. Even this is good enough to understand many things. Okay. Uh, so we are, however, for the formally, if you ask where we are, we are in this situation for the lectures that I give, it, our assumption will be G will be a symmetrizable Cartes-Moody algebra. Uh, in particular, uh, so the subject of Venkatesh's lectures, e.g. affine uh, algebras. Okay, so that so much about the representation theory part of what we are talking about. And combinatorial models, we are seeing many of them. So let me keep this board. Okay, maybe I want. Okay, I'll I'll draw. I'll go there and. So models, so what do we mean by models? Uh, so you have seen some of those in Ravinder's lectures. So they could be tableau or they could be what are called patterns. <coughs> or what, what you call Gelfand Zeitlin patterns. One comment about this Zetlin is uh, that being a Russian name, it has several spellings if, in case you want to look up. It is spelled with a T, with a C and with a Z variously on Math Sinite. 
okay Z E I T L I N C E T L I N or T S E T L I N okay I think they all refer to the same Zetlin person but there are three different spellings even on math sign it um, and of course the ones introduced by Vishwanath which are paths okay. and the following must have been clear to you from Ravinda's lectures that tableau and patterns so tableau in particular semi standard young tableau and patterns gt patterns which are given bounding row lambda 1 to the lambda n these two are uh, very easily in bijection seem to be in bijection um, and the, the um, paths that we will talk about that Vishwanath introduced has started introducing in his lectures that we will see more of next week the rest of this week and next week uh, are uh, uh, so the words exactly used by Vishwanath a sweeping generalization of these models so uh, tableaus which are equivalent to patterns are subsumed by the theory of paths okay? and it is a, a sweeping in various senses um, very most importantly it applies so all these uh, tableau pattern theory are for uh, SLN mostly there are versions for classical groups as a uh, Ravinder just uh, one hour ago or uh, half an hour ago wrote down patterns for uh, type C right? but uh, uh, you know but these are become extremely not they are not so easy to work with and there are if you talk about exceptional groups for example or if you go here then uh, the analogs are uh, uh, didn't exist even okay. but so the, the the paths does subsumes tableau and is works in general so that is one so, so sweeping in that sense right it's also uh, sweeping in the sense that even in the case of sln even in the case of sln the paths give you um, various give you more flexibility so the, the, uh, as we will see okay, even in the case of SLN there is more flexibility so even if you are interested only in SLN even the, so paths are good they, they give you flexibility so sweeping in that sense also um, there are theorems like Littlewood Richardson rule which uh, will be the subject of tomorrow's talk by Mrigendra I think in place of Ravinder um, which are which for the special classic uh, for the case of SLNC um, they are uh, already quite complicated and you would not know how to generalize it to other situations but the paths uh, does it very you know very beautifully it in one sweep it uh, uh, it d does it does it and does it so beautifully that all the complication vanishes it is like I have this general theory which is which gives me a statement and when I need to specialize and get uh, um, specialize and get more get my hands dirty I can ok and, no, no, and not only are the statements simpler they are also more uh, malleable I mean you maneuverable you can actually work with those general statements for example uh, one thing we may later do is there is something called uh, the Partha Sarathi Rangara Vardarajan conjecture PRV conjecture which says something about some irreducible representation occurring in a tensor product of two representations it is just that statement Okay, so, so uh, Littlewood Richardson rule is a very is a is a very involved thing, and when you want to say something like this, this some particular representation occurs 
in this right you will see that the paths achieve there is a proof of the prv conjecture very simple proof using paths okay so they are sweeping in very many senses okay and the basic reference is of course i let me write it down vishwanath has mentioned this but it's worth writing down paths and notice the um, similarity with the title of the uh, workshop paths and root operators in representation theory so naturally this will be the because the combinatorial model being talked about here is paths okay this is uh, littleman peter littleman annals of math 1995 okay um so instead of models the, the model he is talking about paths and notice this root operators so the, this is the key thing that is available here which which you can now that is available here and it subsumes these two it's also available here but the one thing that th this is really the key um, uh, thing in paths which is not which which makes it work okay so these are the e alphas and beta alphas that we you already seen the definition of okay and so let me also give you some um, uh, encouragement here so, uh, in tableau yes yes they do uh, they, uh, uh, for um, uh, they they do exist because so it's a, because tableau are special paths and therefore you can just take the definition and and they also ex they uh, in some sense they also um, what is that preceded little man tableau for, there was a path operator definition by lasco schutz and berger for the um, sln case but it it really is one of the achievements i would say of this Uh, of this paper, uh, these uh, root path, uh, ro the very simple definition of root operators, very calculus-like definition of root operators, and uh, uh, and the applicability of it, the wide applicability of it. Okay, so it, I think all of us should be reading this paper. It's a it's a, it's a technical paper, but it is elementary. you know you don't need anything more than calculus to read this paper on the one hand of course you need to know while group combinatorics a little bit but it is very elementary okay so for a far reaching paper to be so elementary is a is a good thing right and being and that elementary things uh, you know you people are, would be much faster than uh, older people like me so it's it's you are better equipped to read the paper because uh, it is elementary so the uh, i would encourage you to look at it and in fact read it as we go along this workshop okay um so there are also um, other papers but this is really the um so see also little man invention as paper which precedes this 1993 and if you do look at it uh, do talk to me or vishwanath because the there is a definition of root operators already here and the definition here is different the definite the definition given here of root operators is better than the definition given here so the definition that has been given to you is the one here okay so there is some technical technicalities that are different so if you are going to read it you may you would uh, well advise to talk to one of us uh, also as vishwanath mentioned there is an icm zurich talk by littleman 
1994 proceedings where he talks uh, about how these paths generalize tableau etc. So, this is very readable, okay. but really what we should be doing is reading this paper, this is what we should be doing. Um, and uh, reading this paper has, uh, so it is technical, but uh, must, you know, we are trying to master the technicalities. So, it is, it is going to be technical, okay. But we are interested in the technicalities and uh, um, mastering those technicalities can be helpful for your whatever your purposes are in representation theory. So, it is uh, it's I think well spent the effort. Okay. So, let me draw one more picture here before we start. Um, so, I want okay. So, we have representations and the following two fa facts have been mentioned by Ravinder many times. So, it is we are interested in complex semi simple Lie algebras, finite dimensional representation theory. Okay. By the way, the infinite dimensional representation theory is also very interesting and very different. We are not entering going there at all. So, this is finite dimensional representation theory of these algebras, and every representation this is a semi simple category, meaning every representation is a sum of irreducible representations and there is a classification of irreducible representations. Okay, that is, so, so, we in a sense we understand every representation, it is a sum of irreducible representations and we have a classic classification of irreducible representations. Moreover, every represent just like in finite group theory, so you attach a character to a representation right it is a it is a, it is a trace right here it was formally introduced as you write some formal polynomial in, um, in the, you look at the weight multiplicities and then introduce a certain write a formal sum okay but we will have occasion maybe to see that it is you can also think of it as a trace it is also a certain trace. So, trace restricted to the di a diagonal subgroup. If you want to think in terms of groups, it is it can also it has also an interpretation as a trace. Okay, so we have these characters, and as uh, Ravinder was mentioning, so the character is a is a very small part of the representation. It is really you know like in a finite group what you, what are you doing you are throwing away the matrix you are just keeping the trace values of those matrices right no matter how large these uh, large the matrix it could be a thousand by thousand or a million by million matrix right you are throwing away the matrix just keeping the trace value of it. So, on the face of it we are losing a lot of information but somehow the magically this is good enough to keep track of the representation okay so they they so this is a you have this picture here okay so as uh, ravinder was doing some examples here what you for suppose i have two representations say v lambda and v mu i want to take their tens uh, two irreducible representations i want to take their tensor product and I, was, I want to decompose this as a direct sum of irreducible representation. So, let us introduce the notation for this. This is usually written C lambda mu nu V nu or that is ok or if you want ok. 
So C lambda mu nu is the number of copies of V nu occurring in the tensor product of V lambda tensor V mu. Okay. So, so compute so the LR problem, the Little Wood Richardson problem, which tomorrow you, you will hear more about. In the case of SLN, the tableau version of the rule. Yes. Ah, thank you. Okay. So what Ravinder is saying, V sub lambda is the weight space correspond. V is a representation. The weight space is. So this is. Okay, I'll try to remember this notation. <laughs> yeah, good, good to be consistent with. Yes. Uh, you mean two direct sums? V new. Okay, thank you, thank you. V new. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this looks awkward, but I, but it's clear, right? What is meant? Right. So, what you can do, for example, this is what, um, and uh, as, uh, so suppose we are in the SLN case, right? So, as Ravinder just did this morning, what you can do is, you can take, this has a sure function, sure polynomial, S lambda. This is also notation you used. Okay. This has a sure polynomial, S mu, right? Okay. So, and so, since characters determine representations, what I can do is I can just take the character of this and try to understand, write it as a direct, uh, as a sum of characters of irreducible representations, right. So, one of the things, uh, maybe I will mention it now if Raminder has not already mentioned. So, if you look at, if you vary over all lambda, then the sure polynomials will form a basis of integral basis of symmetric function, symmetric polynomials. Okay. So, this S lambda, S mu will be the, the product of these two symmetric polynomials will be the character of this. Right. And since character determine, determine, characters determine representations, all you need to do seems like I want to write this as C lambda mu nu s nu. This is what I need to do. So, it is just a matter of taking those symmetric polynomials, multiplying them and expressing it in this basis of symmetric polynomials. Okay. In the, so, this, is, this has this elementary high school uh, algebra version of the rule. Okay. But, this is easier said than done. Okay, so this, uh, this is no, it's it's it it is complicated. So what, um, whether it is tableau or paths, what they try to do is, so here is the models, or especially paths. So, it, it creates a world, in, so this is the combinatorial world, this is the representation theoretic world. So, it is a world in between. So, you have from the representation, you can look at the set of paths, which, from which you can compute the characters, but this is just keeping some extra information just a little more. You do not want to keep too much because it is you have to it, it, it involves cost. We do not want to keep too much, but at the same time we want to keep enough to to be able to solve such problems. Okay? And somehow magically this is what the root operators manage to do. Okay? So, the, the so this is the picture you have to keep in mind and um, in trying to understand what is going on. So, some of the details even if are they are, they are, we are as I said we are going to be technical. So, some of it may be 
um, over the head naturally so, but uh, you, you have to sort of draw lines between those and um, hopefully follow the statements and as much of the proof as possible and uh, allow yourself not to be um, totally lost if you do not understand a particular proof. You should be able to draw a box around it and isolate it. Okay. Okay. So, any questions before we actually begin? Yes, it is true even in the um, symmetrizable Cartes-Moody setting for integrable highest weight representations. So, the, the same rule works. Um, the, so, the, the, we will state a rule for paths which works from SL2 onwards to <laughs> symmetrizable Cartes-Moody in all cases. One uniform rule, simple rule and on top of it which is, is just you know. Yes. Yes, there will be lots of combinatorial interpretation. These will count. That's the whole point. So we want to interpret these as. So, so to answer this question, so what typical answers will be? This will count so many combinatorial objects. So you will define objects with lambda mu nu as constraints and say count the objects of this kind. For example, tomorrow he will do a certain tableau, skew tableau of shape uh, lambda minus mu having some extra property such that and then mu is also involved. So, it will be constrained by lambda mu nu. You count those combinatorial objects and the co that count is C lambda mu nu, etc. That will be the nature of uh, the solutions to this uh, problem. Okay. 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 So uh, um, let me also take um, okay. Maybe I'll do this towards the end of the. So, let me mention the most important theorem. So, that is the main paper we are talking about. Let me also mention the most important theorem in the paper, the most difficult the most and the most important paper uh, theorem. Okay. I, I, I maybe uh, two versions of it I mean and uh, so, you can take this as one version. So, this is so theorem. So, I am stating this without proof for the moment. Yes. These coefficients are non negative. Non negative, yes. They have to be. Because, because it is because it is this, because it is this, they have to be non negative. more complicated ways okay so th let's call this the colored directed graph isomorphism theorem so this is briefly called the isomorphism theorem Okay, now we we'll, let us get technical. So, so, 
so p plus right so this is the set of parts so i am now assuming i am for undefined terms i am referring to vishwanath's lectures okay so path is starts at so the path is a path in piece wise linear path in h star right where h comes from our we have fixed a symmetrizable katsmudi or even an sln if you wish right it is the cartan dual of the cartan the real real in fact the rational uh, uh, you know the rational span of the co roots sorry rational span of the roots right rational span of the roots so that is h star and then this is a path from 0 1 the compact interval 0 1 but only the rational numbers or, and to this thing uh, piecewise linear and having rational turns etc ok so there is a set of paths uh, lying entirely in the dominant wild chamber and ending at integral weights so and it, since it is lying entirely in the dominant weight chamber naturally it must end at an integral weight which will be dominant ok that is the set so let pi and pi prime be in p plus so so given pi in pi or ok pi int ok so let me introduce one more notation uh, the notation is not particularly non the notation terminology I am afraid uh, is not particularly illuminating it is it's, it's not sorry I mean it looks like Vishwanath was saying there is so many integrality conditions so you today I am <laughs> it is uh, so even the word so here there is an int used but this is not the integrality condition that he, he talked you know so ok so let me just define this so this is so this is the set of paths all paths that end at a integral weight that uh, with uh, ending at integral weights so the only r constraint here is that the path must end at an integral weight of course it always starts at the origin and it is always piecewise linear always has rational terms ok ok it is a super set of p plus indeed so this is a subset in here ok let us indicate like that ok so and for pi in pi int ok so let us introduce this b pi to be so the so this is um, the sm smallest subset of paths such that two things happen pi belongs to subset let me call it s pi belongs to s so and 2 s union 0 this is the so when we are at true root operators remember paths can vanish that is why this formal 0 addition is there 0 is closed under E alpha f alpha for all alpha in alpha simple 
Okay. So all we are saying modulo this nonsense is that you just take this pi, just take all possible ways you can operate the root operators. Remember always finitely many, right? It, we are doing algebra here, so so it's always finitely many. So you take up any finite strings of e alpha f alpha in any order, any any number, act on pi, see what you get. If keep it if it is non if it is not zero. If it's zero, forget, forget it, and just keep on getting like this. You'll get more and more paths, maybe infinitely many. Doesn't matter. Okay. So you keep you. That is this set, B pi. Okay, and um, B pi is a colored graph. So. So we will draw this graph, but uh, let me just say it. B pi is a colored graph where I color it with, so there are as many colors as uh, simple roots. Okay. It's a directed, I also use the word, directed colored graph. So if I have path pi and if it goes by F alpha, so this is colored alpha. So I have colored, let's draw some colored arrow, I'll correct it. This is the color alpha to pi prime if f alpha pi equals pi prime, pi and pi prime in b pi, b sub pi. Okay, that's the. Colored graph is right. Uh, at the moment, possible, but at the moment, uh, well, we see a priori yes, but clearly no, because if you could end up from, so can somebody answer his question, please? So his question is, are there cycles in this path? So if I start with pi, for example, can I come back to pi by, by a circle? What decreases? That is the name. Right, that is the so the, the so the uh, pi when you apply so the end point of this is alpha less than pi that's one of the uh, simple properties of f alpha that we have already seen okay so uh, uh, pi 1 if if there was a cycle pi 1 i could i i am able to write as pi 1 minus a non negative integral linear combination of the alphas but this is not possible because the alphas are linearly independent okay so is that clear so there are no cycles in this okay so the theorem is that if if pi is pi 1 is equal to pi prime 1 then b pi this is once again colored directed graph isomorphism between b pi and b pi prime Is the statement clear? I repeat, this is the most important theorem of this of this paper and therefore also of the course. And also the most technically demanding of the theorems. Right? 
right so towards the end i will draw i'll draw the pictures again for all the models for the adjoint representation okay so you will see this thing in action ah good question i asked that yeah so if if these are true then is it true that pi 1 is equal to pi prime 1 that's the question so i will let you think about it that's a good question okay uh, whether it's true or not it's a, it's it's a little technical the question so homework so if b pi So this may be a good thing to think about uh, if you want to understand Cartes-Moody Lie algebras, or even the affine ones. Okay. So let us draw some corollaries from this, which are um, far uh, very important. Okay, corollary. pi is the unique path in b pi such that e alpha pi is vanishes for all simple alpha okay and the second statement is every path pi in b pi is of the form f alpha 1 f alpha s some string this is just some string two consecutive ones can be equal however long etc of um, so we are under the assumption there pi is in p plus okay some string okay is the, are the, is the statements clear okay now you can tell me the proofs how is this a corollary so let me give you a hint if you remember what vishwanath stated as lakshmi bai shashadri path okay so there was a complicated so they were paths um, they were rational paths satisfying which means rational meant that uh, in addition to being rational numbers it it went first you know it it was constrained to go move only in the while group conjugate directions of lambda so let's say let's fix so put lambda is equal to this lives in the dominant chamber and ends at an integral weight so it ends at some dominant integral weight so this is in p plus right by by the hypothesis 
that pi is in pi plus. Okay. Then I am asking you to look at uh, ls, so parts of class or ls parts. Let me write it out. I don't know what was the notation use of uh, class lambda. Is that the term used? ls lambda. Okay, ls lambda. So this by part, so there was a theorem with four parts, right? So this is nothing but by definition, so this is, uh, this is B pi, so the theorem, the first part. pi lambda where this is standard notation again pi lambda is straight line to lambda always from the origin. So this is from yesterday's lecture. Yeah. So, so the, the, so this was. This is not the definition. This is not the definition. So, he he said that every path here is obtained from. So there are two two things he said. So so LS paths were rational paths satisfying certain strong integrality condition. That was the definition. But then it was shown that they are just the set obtained by taking the straight line path to lambda and applying the root operators. So I'm, I, I, so maybe this comes from two parts of that theorem. Okay, so I'm using that theorem strongly. Okay, so this is true, right? So LS lambda therefore is also a color directed graph. And by this theorem, whatever my path is, the, these two are colored isomorphic. So am I making sense? Is this, is this okay? So see, whatever the definition of LS was, after the st st uh, theorem that was partly proved, it didn't prove the main part. Okay. The claim is that another way of thinking about LS paths, they are just the they are just B pi when you take pi to be the straight line path. This is the important take home, I mean take away. Okay. Therefore, so they are also so you can think of that as they are closed under E alpha F alpha, right? Therefore, it is a directed graph color directed graph in the same way okay and now by this theorem no matter what other pi you take which is completely in the dominant chamber and ends at the same value lambda you may not have taken a straight line path okay these two are colored isomorphic okay and then the, the same theorem parts 3 and 4 were the, there is a unique path in unique LS path LS in uh, unique LS path of shape lambda or L, in L, unique path in LS lambda which, hat, which satisfies this property namely pi lambda right yes it's lo, lambda is dominant time lambda is dominant. Unique path that satisfies that. Okay. And by the colored iso graph isomorphism, so this, uh, you know, if you want this pi goes to pi prime. Pi maps to pi prime under this.
so is this clear now the so it's it's an immediate corollary of the statement of the theorem because of because there in this model there is the colored graph isomorphic right so if there was a if there was another path with this property first of all the since these are colored so okay i'll erase the theorem but we'll use it so by the theorem we have ls lambda colored directed graph isomorphic to b pi that is the end of the proof and uh, meaning now you are reduced to showing these properties for ls lambda but th those were shown yesterday okay so now a corol follows corollary follows because corresponding properties are true for ls lambda by theorem proved yesterday okay is it okay let's do something that's a little more not so straightforward but again a corollary but this is sort of immediate from the you know. but this one is you have to work a little bit so corollary so i'm thinking maybe i'm already seeing lost faces so i, I i'm thinking i will draw this picture again of so maybe i'll do the illustration first before going on okay so, so is this okay is this is the corollary proof okay 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 so maybe i'll continue and see you if uh, if you're not following just uh, stop i don't mind explaining things again okay so the next corollary is the following it's the so remember you, there was another statement proved about um ls paths that is you, for any simple alpha the minimum value of the function h alpha h pi alpha is an integer okay so uh so i want to let me call this i want to introduce okay i'll state it out but later on i want to call this vishwanath called this the integrality condition yet another integrality condition so let us call it the i just want to propose mi, uh, minimal integrality property just for a change so that we know which integrality property we are talking about okay i'll do that when that uh, later maybe so for so you take any path in b pi again the same notations pi is in p so this is a path in p plus so pi 1 is a dominant integral weight and it lies entirely in the dominant weight chamber so max of oh sorry uh for alpha simple any simple min so here is the assertion of this corollary min of h eta alpha this is the way it was written right is an integer
So let us make one comment here. So the so homework if you want and I will solve the homework later in the when we Uh, any simple, any simple, alpha simple root, this is, so homework is show max h alpha, uh, h eta alpha need not be. So it is only for the minimum you could have the maximum could be a non non integer okay just in case you are wondering and we will see as you already know an example i'll will among the few things simple things you know simple parts you know there is there is an example there okay so let's write out the proof of this Okay, proof. So this already this proof illustrates a certain um, you know the proofs go in certain expected you know sort of after you read them they go they tend to go in a few directions which is a good thing because if we know those directions if we become familiar with those directions we uh, you know they, they are sort of the techniques are rep rep you know the same techniques repeat that is what I mean ok. So here is so let for this proof let q be q be an integer 1 2 3 so consider so this is eta going to q times eta. So the, I expand by expand by path by eta. Okay. So the claim I'm making a certain claim here. So I take a path of shape. Uh, uh, sorry, a path. Uh, uh, can I, is it okay if I call it a path of shape eta? Are you comfortable? Instead of saying in b pi, b pi, etc., so I'll say eta is a path of shape pi. Right? Eta is a path of shape pi, meaning, meaning it it belongs to b pi. It it, it comes like this. Okay. So, so I take a path of shape pi and multi, you know, ex, you know, just expand it by q. Right? Then the claim is it lies in. So remember, q pi is also has the same property. It also lies entirely in the dominant chamber and ends at the integral weight. In fact, it ends at q times pi one. Okay. So so this makes sense. Right. The claim is that this, when I expand it, is also lives in this the expanded path here is is of this shape meaning one way to show it would be to find a string from which it is it, it descends from q times pi okay and that is easy to see in fact this is this we have seen in some of the homeworks so first of all this is an injection that much is clear because uh, you are just taking the path and expanding it, right? The contraction by Q would give you a. Uh, you could recover the original path by contracting by, by shrinking by a factor Q. Therefore, this is an injection, and image lands in. Lands in B pi. Oh, sorry, B Q pi. Why? Because because if you for this alpha if I write a string like that
because if then to get so what I can do is I take in, I take q pi right and apply f alpha s q right and f alpha 1 q then I just get q times zeta okay okay so now let's start so this is so image of beta can be identified as a colored so I am use the word subgraph but that is not really correct so I will put it in quotes so where the directions are f alpha to the q so if I look at this graph there is a certain so every path here when I expand it by q belongs here right and this shows that if this is gotten like this this is gotten like this so if I just follow not uh, one f i but to the uh, to the q and look at that so you know subgraph in a very I mean I don't know if this can be called a subgraph in the strict sense but I hope you understand what I mean I, I, this is true right okay so now suppose this was not an integer so what we will do is we will use like in the previous case we will use the property for ls and want to prove this right we know for ls it is true that minimum is a integer right so you we want to translate this we want to get this back okay but it the it is not so immediate as in the previous cases you have to do a little bit of work and this bit of work involves this q expanding by an appropriate q okay so suppose by way of contradiction suppose my suppose min h al h eta alpha was so let me write it minus p over q less than 0 not an integer Okay, maybe in reduced terms also. Suppose this is so, then observe. Okay, what is the so so the minimum is always zero, remember, zero or less. So if it's not, not an integer, it's strictly negative. Okay, so I've written it minus p over q. Okay. Please tell me how many times I can apply f alpha to the path eta before it vanishes. Sorry, uh, I know e alpha. Sorry, e alpha. The integral part of integral part of p by q. Very good. Okay, is that clear to all of you? Then the floor so Vishwanath wrote it this I am using floor so I it's the, to indicate floor or roof you can use only half the thing so, so it, this is floor ok integral part is the max integer such that e alpha to this 
it is the maximum integer such that this holds. Okay, I should actually write is the maximum integer yes such that this, but I'm no, I'm abusing notation here. Okay. Okay, but. Uh, Okay, so now let us draw the picture. Okay. I have here L s pi B pi and L s sorry, I should write L s pi 1 right and L s q pi 1 right? and then b q pi. So, the, the trick is to do this, this is a right. So, what does the isomorphism theorem give you? It tells you that these are colored graph isomorphic and these are colored graph isomorphic. Right? Because correct? Okay. Now also this thing gives us there are so I given any pi I can expand and have this in, in inclusion there. So this there is this expansion inclusion there. Okay. Okay. Now tell me please what is the so let eta prime. So, here is my eta right I start with my eta here. What I want to do is look at eta there is a something corresponds to this under this isomorphism. I look at eta prime here correct. Okay. Now, Tell me please, how many E alphas can I apply to this before it becomes 0? Same number, which is integral part of P by Q. Okay, very good. Now, tell me now, how many, um, what is the so, so now tell me min h eta prime alpha, um, alpha. Please tell me this. Remember, it is a, a less path. Therefore, its minimum is an integer. So, this is minus minus not p by q minus the floor of p by q correct. Correct. Okay. So, what is the minimum here when I go So, minimum will be, so, so the, the problem will come, so the, so the contradiction will be obtained as follows. So, you look at expansions here, what will turn out is, this will turn, um, how to say, so I expand by Q, okay. then the number of times I can apply, so here I expand by Q, go to Q eta prime. Right. So, now let us write out what is the um, max integer 
s such that e alpha to the s q eta prime is not equal to 0. Please tell me the answer. So minus p by q and then just times q, right? So this, so correct? Okay, and this goes to q eta. So what is minimum of So under this q eta will go to this under the colored graph isomorphism okay which means that this s must be s no this is for the ls eta prime yeah, this is for the LS, yeah. This is for the LS. Yeah, that what you are saying is for the eta. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, therefore, by C colored graph isomorphism, iso, between LS Q pi 1 and beta Q pi, it turns out that the the max s such that e alpha s q eta not equal to 0 is also q times correct because whatever so this is a graph isomorphism if I can apply so many times here the corresponding things I should be able to apply only so many times correct on the one hand but on the other so this is on the one hand on the one hand on the other let us see what happens q eta what is the minimum of that minimum of q eta alpha is equal to minus p so e alpha to the p on q eta not equal to 0 ok but p is bigger than this if I did that right, correct? Hmm? No, no, because it is not an integer. Is that okay? So, we have contradiction and that finishes the proof. But uh, this kind of proof technique is used repeatedly. We will expand things. Why does the diagram commute? Because, because of if I got this from F alpha, applying a certain F alpha, if I got this from a certain, that same I am applying here and that same to the power q's I am applying there. That should give it, if I am not mistaken. Hmm? So 
Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. You are using all, you are using all that, yeah. Yeah, I didn't mention that, but the, the diagram commutes because, because of this. Okay, is this proof good? Yes. Yeah, sure. So, it's an LS path. So, LS path, the minimum has to be an integer. And therefore, it is the maximum, the, so you can detect it by just trying to apply E alpha to it. It is the maximum value of the E alpha that is non-zero on that. So, you, I, if, I, if I can apply E alpha 10 times and not the 11th time, then that means the minimum is minus 10. So that's you, is that okay? You can detect the minimum value of an LS path by, it is equal to, equal to the um, the ma uh, maximum times you can apply. Yeah. In fact, for any any path whose uh, if the minimum is an integer, if the minimum is an integer, then th this um, and so I am using this. Yeah. So when minimum is an integer, that value is the maximum s that you can e alpha to the s. That just follows from the definition of E alpha. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, that's okay. So uh, let me. Okay, that uh, as always, these things are taking more time than I expected. But that's okay. We are we are in no rush. Okay, so. Um, Okay, maybe I'll. I wanted to draw this picture with all these paths, etc. Uh, one should I do that? Maybe is that is that is, rather than go into more technicalities? It's something that you have seen before, so it could be repetitive. But at the okay, I'll do that because. Um, I think it's worth it. So let me take the adjoint representation of SL3 and write out on the board the various models, the Schur polynomial, the colored graph isomorph, colored graph LS of the LS colored graph, the colored graph in another pi, etc. So this it will illustrate the isomorphism theorem. Okay, you already seen this illustration, but maybe you don't see. No, 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 I want to just make it once more, drive it home. Okay, and it's an important example to keep in mind. And it will also answer the homework question that I gave here, namely the maximum value of an LS path of this H alpha, uh, this function need not be an integer. Okay, it will answer all those questions. So, let us do that. So, um, I will, can I, Erase, uh, it's, I want the middle board to start. So, is it okay if I erase this? Okay. So, I'll start here. So, let's take. Okay, so let me erase also part of this. So G is equal to SL3C. Okay, I take the adjoint representation. Lambda for that, which is uh, 
so this is v lambda so this is equal to v lambda where lambda is so what's the highest weight 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 so 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 that's the weight okay where these are interpreted as linear functionals on on the cartan sub algebra which is the diagonal sub algebra okay epsilon 1 is just the linear functional which maps a diagonal matrix to the 1 1 entry to its 1 1 entry epsilon 2 is the one that maps to the 2 2 entry and we will also use epsilon 3 which will map it to the third entry and obviously because if the traces are zero epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 is zero so you can work only with epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 however it's most convenient to have epsilon 3 because as you will see immediately it makes much more uh, it's more beautiful with epsilon 3 thrown in than without okay okay so what is the character of this so so let's write out so you already so i'll write out various models here so let's write out the standard sorry semi standard young tableau model okay so the, what the, what is the dimension of this representation a joint meaning it is sl3 itself as a module over itself as a, or a representation over itself and it's a, you've seen in an exercise that it is a simple lie algebra therefore that can, is a irreducible representation and what is the dimension of this it is 8 because 3 by 3 is 9 but trace is 0 that is one linear condition so it's 9 minus 1 8 so dimension of v lambda is 8 of course so um what we want to do is um so another way to think about this is um you can think of S, the group sl3c acting on this by conjugation sl3c being the group of 3 by 3 complex matrices with determinant 1 okay. and they, they that group acts by conjugation on this so you can also think of the character as uh, uh, maps from the ma uh, the diagonal matrices there to c star okay so the, the, you can also think of them as polynomial maps from the diagonal entries of that group to c star yes sl3c sl3c okay so as a, so let me start writing the so this 2 and 1 means i must look at the shape right Okay. and i must start filling hmm? so um sl3c so there is a correspondence between representations of sl3c and this group sl3c okay so um and sl3c that uses the fact that this is simply connected okay so if you have a simply connected semi simple lie group then the lie algebra representations are in fact the same as the group representations okay so now this acts conjugation action on sl3c okay so that is you take a matrix and a group element g t t g inverse that's how it acts right so that is the corresponding representation and you can take the ca character of the that is the trace of the diagonal matrices 
So, so you restrict here, the, you look at the diagonal matrices, they consist of elements T1, T2, T3 subject to T1, T2, T3 is equal to 1, right. So, and you can look at, you can, this decomposes into eigen spaces for the, and the, for the to torus there and the, uh, even one dimensional representations for the torus and for each of those is given by a certain character of the torus and that character you write. That's, that's it. Anyway, so if you don't understand some of that, it, not to worry, you can just work with the Lie algebra. But the point is, this is again some representation theory where, so like I was saying, there are even other representation theories are related to this representation theories in many ways. For example, here in this case, it is the same representation theory. So, it's the same. So, SLNC as a Lie algebra is the same representations as SLNC as a Lie group or an algebraic group. Okay, it's the same. It's not even similar, it's the same. So, I will take, uh, you know, I will just say as a league, as an algebraic group, let me see, just me recover myself and say algebraic group. Uh, as a SLNC, as an algebraic group, we'll look at what are called the rational representations, finite dimensional <coughs> rational representations. They are precisely, they are nothing more, nothing than this, right? They're, so, there are cases when the representation theory is the same. There are cases when the representation theory is similar. It's almost the same. Right? Uh, for example, for PSLNC, if you take, if you, there is a, if you know what that means, if you take PSLNC, then it's almost the same. It's not exactly the same, it's almost the same. There are cases when the representation theories are related. Like, for example, if you take the while group of, a, of the Lie algebra, uh, its representations and the representations of this. Okay, so, so there are many cases that are possible. The representations could be same, could be similar, could be related in interesting ways, and some of which are explored and known, some of which are not explored and known, and the under. Okay, so let me write out. So we were supposed to take this tableau of this shape, this two and one comes from this, right, and fill this up with integers one, two, and three. That one, two, three coming from this three, right? Okay. So, um, so let me write it out. One, one, two. Uh, one. Okay. So let me. Write, so the it has to be recall the conditions. The along the columns it must be increasing. So the column can only be first column can be one two, one three, or two three. Okay. So uh, let me do that. So. And uh, so if it's one, and if this is one, two, this one can be one, two, or three. So I have three coming from that, right? Okay. Now I, I also have one, two, sorry, one, three, one. Okay, let me write it. Okay, that's the way I've written it. One, three, three, right? And now we are left with the two threes. Okay. Right? So let us write out the, I will write out the character. Okay. So here I will write T1 square T2. Maybe Ravinder used X, but I am just using T plus T1, T2 square. I hope you see the, I am writing it just right above, plus T1, T2, T3, plus T1 square, T3, plus T1, T2, T3. So, observe that this already has occurred here. So, it is 2 times T1, T2, T3. So, it is possible that some of them have the same weights, which means they have the same end point plus the, the corresponding paths or 
the corresponding parts, which we will come to in a minute. T2 square T3 plus T2 T3 square. Right? So that's the character. So what are T1, T2, T3 here? You can think of them T1 as at the exponentiation of epsilon 1, T2 as the exponentiation of epsilon 2, and T3 as the exponentiation of epsilon 3. If you keep this in mind, then your language, whatever you were using, we wrote exponential of a certain weight, right? So that corresponds exactly to this. Okay. okay. So let us do this in um, in patterns. Right. So the base is always two one zero. Right. And I need to fill this in. What was this? This was the number of ones. Right. So there are two ones here. So I write 2 here. So this was the number of 1s and 2s. So there are 3 of them and I must get, this must add to 3, right? Okay. So the only way it can add to 3 is like this, I suppose. So did I do that correctly? Okay. Okay. So 2, 1, 0. Okay. So there is only one single 1. And uh, again, okay. So two one zero, and there is a single one, and there are two twos here, and so the, let me see. Uh, the ah, so the, sorry, this should yeah, this is correct. This is you can think of this as when I take out the three, what is left is two comma zero. The shape when I leave out three. One what? Okay. Column is one one. Ah, okay. Column notation is one one. Okay. okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So, so when I remove the three here, it is two zero. This is okay. So two two zero. So here it is 2, 1, 0. So there is 1, 1. And when I remove the 3, it is a 2, 0. So it's 2, 1, 0. When I remove the 3, it's a 1, 0. And there is 1, 1. So when I remove the 3, it is a 2, 0. And there are no 1s. When I remove the 3, it's a 1, 0, and there are no ones. Is this OK? So let us write out, uh, I took too much space maybe. So let us write out a path. So I'm going to write out B. This path. So this is. Let's keep this in mind. I'm going to and epsilon one plus epsilon two plus epsilon three is zero. So this picture matches that. The, the sum of these three vectors is zero. And I hope you understand what I what I mean by this. So this is two epsilon one plus epsilon three. I take this path. Okay. So the, the dominant value chamber, so, so this is, so you can draw alpha and beta in this graph, but this is H beta. If you, I mean, which I call alpha and which I call beta is a matter of, um, no, I suppose alpha is, uh, E epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2, beta is epsilon. Okay. So this is H of epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3. Okay. And so, and this is H of epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2. Okay. 
and so this is the dominant y chain. So this is DWC. And so this is 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. So that is, I am, so this path therefore is lying entirely in the dominant y chamber and is ending at that required point. So it is an example of the kind of thing we have considered today. Okay. Whereas, so let me write it here, B, I did not leave myself, give myself enough room. Okay. I will take 5 minutes extra. Okay. So the other is Ls of 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon. Okay. So let us write two path models. Okay. One for this path and one for the Ls model. Okay. And by our theorem, these should be colored graph isomorphic. So let us verify that. Okay. So this is a good thing to keep in mind. Okay. Now, Vishwanath told you also how to go from here to here. Right? So this is an illustration. I already mentioned that paths generalize tableau. Right? So if I take this path, if I take, so in, in the paths there are several models. I can take any path completely lying in the dominant y chamber and ending at that, ending at my required point. They will all be colored graph isomorphic. Okay? And how do I get tableau out of paths? Well, I choose a very special path, namely this one. And then I can, there is a correspondence between this and tableau. We will do that in detail. But here is how in this particular case you go from this to this, if you remember what Vishwanath did. So this is how you go in the first direction, this is second direction and this is third direction, right? If I, if I am I doing this right? So this path is in terms of paths, it is just epsilon 1, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, right? So I can look at this and write the corresponding path, right? So this is epsilon 2, which is go here then epsilon 1, then epsilon 1. What is this? Epsilon 3, then epsilon 1, so, and then epsilon 2. So I will indicate the origin by a dot. So here it is epsilon 1, epsilon 1, epsilon 3, right? Okay. Here it is epsilon 2, epsilon 1, epsilon 3. Here it is epsilon 3, epsilon 1, epsilon 3. epsilon 2, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 and epsilon 3, 2 and 3. Okay? Okay. Now if you and uh, this also Vishwanath did. So this is what I must do is take the straight line path to epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. So this is, so that straight line path, okay. And if you remember, so we are, let me choose two colors here. Okay, so this is uh, green equals F1 and whatever this color is red is F2. Okay. So there are two colors. There are as many colors as there are simple roots. In this case I can actually use physical colors because there are few of them. Okay. So let us also draw if you draw this. So this is just check if I am, so I do not need to write this because I have done it in green. 
this is like this and uh, so the problem is I am writing he had he had this picture in like this if you remember these eight parts I am doing them in a straight line that is why my arrows are a little ok and so this was ok help me please ok that is a red applying a 2 and then applying a 2 here will Can you help me fill this please? So, uh, this is 1. So I, I made a mistake here. This will be green. Let me just check. So I am changing epsilon 1 to an epsilon 2. This is a green. Okay. Okay. And then apply a green here will take me where? Um, so applying a huh? this one will go here ok thank you ok and then this is a, ok there is one green green and there is a red from here right there should be a red from here which takes me here does the red take me so Mrigendra this will red will take you to the last one ok good and uh, there is some more arrows second red uh, Yeah, there is a red from here which will take to this one, this one, yes, ok, thank you, yeah, that is correct. So, there is a red which, sorry, which takes you there, ok. okay. So, it is very good to keep this in mind and um, uh, so, let me write out the um, corresponding things. So, here it is a straight line ending there. So, it is easy right here. So, this is here I have to be careful I have two of them C is this one. So, let just check that I am doing the right one. So, here it is a straight line going here. Here it is the path going here and coming back. Here it is the straight line going down. Here it is the straight line going to this point and here it is the straight line going to this point. Okay. 
and you can check that. So the Vishwanath already did this, right? This uh, didn't he? The bottom, the LS paths of shape. 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 and as a directed graph. The graph will be the same as I have written the corresponding ones below so you can draw the picture. Okay. And uh, to solve our homework problem just look at this path. So it is going so So if I want to come, come, so here is my root alpha, so it is going here and coming back. Right. So if I apply H beta on this, if I take H beta on this, that is that measures how much I go up from the origin or down below. So it is going up to half and coming back. So that, that solves the homework problem showing that if you apply beta on this, the H beta is half. I mean the maximum value is half. So it need not be an integer. Okay, that also solves the problem. Okay, sorry for going over time. Uh, but uh, uh, hopefully this, this is an illustration I want, you know, this uh, picture is something that we should keep in mind and if we understand this, the various models here in this picture, I think we would have learned something from the workshop.